Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode here at the Jibo's Garage channel. Today we are going to go ahead and prep this beef brisket that I picked up at our local butcher shop. Uh, I picked this small piece of meat up. It is about 8 pounds. It is uh, uh, 46 bucks worth of meat here. And we're going to go ahead and get this opened up, get it seasoned up, get it back in a bag. Uh, so it can marinate overnight. We are going to um, put it back in the refrigerator and that way tomorrow morning I can get up nice and early. I can go outside. I can fire up the grill and get this piece of meat on and then hopefully by mid-afternoon we'll, we will have a perfectly cooked beef brisket. So let's get that started. All right, let's get this package opened up here. There we go. I just want to check the meat out here real quick. Hmm. All right. It's got a nice big fat pad on here, so we're in good shape there. Uh, one of the things I like to do before I season my meat is I do like to rinse it off. I should have opened this inside. I don't know what I was thinking. So um, uh, I do got to get this in, get it rinsed off. I'll be right back. So what I like to do is I like to just throw a little mustard on here like so. The mustard essentially cooks off, but what it does is it holds my seasoning on so I don't, uh, I don't have to worry about it falling off. So let me just kind of give her a good rub here both sides I know people think oh it's gonna taste like mustard believe me it does not the mustard kind of cooks right off it really is just something to for the seasoning to stick to that's it and then listen you can get all fancy you can do some crazy stuff with some seasonings Everybody out there will tell you something else to do, but it's all the same principle here. Salt, pepper, garlic, that's what I put on it. I'm using Montreal steak seasoning because that's what I have, and that's got all the ingredients in it that I need, and I've done this a thousand times over, and it always turns out fantastic, so let's make sure that uh, we get it, get it good and rubbed down here. Good, just like that and then so what I like to do is I like to get it all seasoned up and then I just use one of these large uh, Ziploc bags I throw it in here I Ziploc it I throw it in the refrigerator and I let it go all night and then it's ready in the morning so let me throw this in here We're going to go outside and season up our pork shoulder here. Stick around. Good job. Turn it over. <laughs> we are going to put the mustard on the pork butt so it can hold the seasoning. That's right. Today on this pork butt. <laughs> but I just love the name. Pork butt. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put this on for you, and you can rub it all over, okay? Okay. That feels so weird. Actually, no. Just the sound, it feels so weird. Okay, 
Just do it easy all over the whole meat. Bottom? Yep, flip it over. Okay. Okay. Sorry, gotta, I just like Fortnite. You gotta be cool. Sh shout out for Fortnite! Yeah. Okay, I'll just, we'll edit that out. <laughs> no! <laughs> Spicy. We're gonna use this pork butt seasoning to, I don't know, make it taste good? Yes. Just like you poured the mustard? All over it. Okay. Oh, crap. Don't get crazy. Just put it on there. And we just shake it on like this. We shake it all over. So it's a maraca? Like a maraca. Okay. All right, you shake it all over. Get the... Yeah, get, get it on there. Yeah, get the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> then we give her a little flip it over. That's it. That'll... It's just so. Do it? Yeah. Keep it off the meat. Keep it high. Maraca. So then we just press. The, you don't have to. Daddy will do it. I want to do it. No, nope, your hands are going to get dirty. So you press that seasoning into the meat. That's what the mustard's for. The mustard holds that seasoning on there. You just push it all in there like that. How right. does it taste, actually? Take a look. Pull straight. That's exactly how you do it. And pull. <gasps> Ew! <laughs> Did it get you? It slingshotted me. Go wash your hands and your face. Wait, why? Because it's pig germs. Okay. Roll me, roll me some music. Oh, so what we did is we just used this uh, barbecue pulled pork seasoning. I picked it up at the same place I got the meat from at the butcher shop. Look, all the same kind of stuff in here. This one particularly, uh, we've got brown sugar, salt, uh, garlic, um, a little bit of onion powder, and uh, parsley. And uh, yeah, that's it. So that's the rub. We throw it on, we rub it in, we push it in. We put this into a bag and same thing, put it in the refrigerator tomorrow morning. We'll get up, we'll get the grill fired up. And we'll throw this on and hopefully by mid afternoon, we've got a perfectly uh, cooked pork butt. As we wait for our charcoal to get warmed up, let's go ahead and pull our meat out of the refrigerator and get that set up and ready to go. Thing on is the pork butt. Now let's get our brisket on. So here's the thing people say, how you do your brisket? Fat cap up, fat cap down. I, because the charcoal is right there, I'm going to err on the side of doing it fat side down to kind of protect the meat a little bit because it's so close to the charcoals, which isn't typically what I do. So let's do it like that. All right, we are cooking. All righty, so my brisket is done. 
my pulled pork is done. Oh, damn. That happened a little sooner than I thought. It is done. And we're just going to pull it off here. So, grab it here. Okay, so we pulled off of our, our beef brisket, we pulled off our pork shoulder, and uh, you know, there's always questions about at what temperature do you wrap them in foil, what temperature do you pull them off. So here's the thing. Uh, my beef brisket, um, I wrap it at about 180, 185-ish, and then I let it go all the way up to 200 degrees, uh, 205 even. And then for my pulled pork, I usually wrap that again, right around 180 degrees. And then I pull it off at a rate around 190 to 195 ish. So, and then I'm gonna let this rest for an hour inside, and then uh, an hour, hour or so, and we'll go ahead and we'll pull the pork, and then we'll slice up the brisket. So, that's it. That's as easy as it was. And of course, I'm using a Weber kettle grill, which is uh, by uh, all means one of my uh, favorite grills to use. So, uh, absolutely love it. It doesn't use a whole lot of charcoal, and it holds the temperature well, and I can maintain a very good constant temperature just by using this vent on top, and then uh, by using the Venturi system on the bottom as well. So, all right, let's go check it out. All right, we're gonna let this rest, but I am very curious. So let's take a quick peek. Yeah, it looks fantastic. All right. Oh, look at that. That looks fantastic. Take a look, that's our finished product right there. We're gonna scoop it out and break it up. That turned out pretty good, right there. That's Tastes amazing. All right, let's take a look at our beef brisket. There's our finished product. This may have cooked a little too long. Let's take a peek here. So I think this really looks nice. It turned out very well, very flavorful for a small beef brisket that may have been a little overcooked, but it turned out pretty good actually. Well, thanks for hanging out with us here at the Jibo's Garage and stick around to see how our, our beef brisket turned out and our pulled uh, pork shoulder turned out. So our pork butt, uh, here it is, there it is. Trust me, smells fantastic, tastes great. Wish you could taste it. 
Thanks for joining us. Look forward to seeing you next time here on the Jeebles Garage channel.